Hello and welcome to Manga Monthly, NoisyPixel.net's newest show. This is kind of an introduction to it, explaining what we're going to do with this because clearly it's not going to take over the video game content that we have on the site, but we want to make it known that we do cover manga reviews on the site and we want a way to highlight them a little easier for you and expand our community because why not? We're all nerds here. We all play these weeb ass games. Let's just roll with it. For me, I actually read manga a long time ago actively, but I didn't start reading it. I'm going to be honest with you until this year. It was my New Year's resolution and you can go back to our old podcast episodes and see that this year was going to be the year that I jump back into manga and I give it my all. And I think that I've done that for our readers on the website and I want to kind of bring that here. So how it's going to work is this. We'll put out an episode before the end of the month, highlighting some new releases for the following month. So at the end of this month, you'll get all the releases that we think are notable for August. Then I'll talk about them a little bit and give you my quick interpretation of the series or the new volume that's releasing. In that same episode, I'll recommend two or three manga that we should read together. Those will be manga from recent releases in the past couple months or something from long ago that we could just pick up easily and read uh, digitally because that's how people do it nowadays. Although I do prefer physical releases, but I digress. So two weeks after the manga monthly episode, we'll have a special conversational episode with Spencer the co-host of Unqualified Game Chat and myself, where we'll talk about the three manga that we suggested and we'll read comments from you that we expect you to leave in the Manga Monthly video. And we'll all just give our interpretation of the volume that we're supposed to be reading together. It's all fun to get us engaged and get us talking and find new ways to hang out. There you go. And that's the show. So you get a new show with me being myself, Gaijin boy, who's not completely going to overwhelm you with uh, special phrases and hella nerdy anecdotes about these manga series. I am definitely coming at it from a new perspective of the series. So you might even know more than me, which is cool because I want to learn more about this medium and we want to do better at covering it. With that said, let me just highlight some manga that I've been reading recently. Just remember that in a couple weeks, our first official episode of Manga Monthly will release and we'll have maybe some music and a nice animation for you and stuff. And just give us some time. We got this. We got this, nerds. All right, chill. Let's get into the manga that I'm reading. First off, Viz released Fist of the North Star Volume 1. This is from like 1986, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it did release in the West in the 90s, but it stopped. They didn't, Viz didn't do all the uh, the chapters, so it's coming back in a hardcover, and that's kind of what made me want to rebuy it. The the art in this in this manga is freaking ridiculous. They redid the localization for this release, so it's a little more up to date with how localization has evolved over the years. It's gotten a lot better. We can talk about God. I think back then we can't have any crosses in anything and blood was a big no no. But um, but yeah, this uh, if you have not read Fist of the North Star or played any of the games, then uh, this is a great thing to have on your your bookshelf. Even if you don't have manga, I say look how cool that side panel is. I don't know something about hardcover manga. I'm in. I'm all in. Another release from Viz that I've still reading through but kind of want to highlight is world peace it's incidentally a western manga this is um made by uh, josh tyranny it's pretty okay i'm not i don't know that if there's like this um battle between uh western and eastern uh manga artists but I'm into the idea that um western writers can can get into the manga Manga world. It has great art. But as for the story, it's about uh, it's about this dude who's really good at basketball, and <laughs> he ends up with this this he ends up in a he ends up touching this artifact 
and gets transferred into this world and he ends up holding the earth in his hand, but it's kind of like a basketball and then he uses it as a, an attack. <laughs> I guess I guess it is pretty manga now that I think about it. Um, I'll finish it and I'll write my review on the site soon. But this is out and available now. Moving on to Yen Press, which I'm reading a lot of recently just because uh, they had a huge July and so I've been catching up. Yes, uh, with Yen Press, I'm still in the middle, but I'm reading uh, Sex Ed 120% and it has a warning label, but I think this is deceptive in a way because I was thinking that I was going to have to hide this from of significant others and friends, but um, it's mostly just about sex actually. It teaches you like how to wear a condom and how to use birth control and like the different types of birth control. It's actually uh, very informative. So if you failed your sex ed class in high school, well, get a little refresher here and uh, it's in uh, it's in manga form. Hopefully there aren't any like rogue titties in this that I just <laughs> have to blur out later on because I don't plan to edit this very much. One that I have not started reading, but I plan to is The Detective is Already Dead. This is a light novel. Light novels have been difficult for me to get into just from the fact that they are long form reading and I have to like get in the zone to read. And when I read for too long, I kind of get sleepy. So I uh, there's a few light novels that I'm reading through right now, and this is the next one that I'm starting. But this one is available now, and the, the premise is, is pretty cool. Just about this one guy who's not a very good detective, but always ends up in these detective scenarios. And there's this uh, really good detective girl, and he ends up her assistant, but she's like super skilled and, and he's not so much. So I just like that dynamic and I want to know more. And uh, yeah, she's pretty cute, too. So. <laughs> Don't need much to get me interested. Another Yen Press release that uh, I'm halfway through. As you can see, I, I'm the type that puts a little uh, bend right there and not too many people are happy about that, that I do that. So maybe I should stop. But this one is about one of those. Uh, it's not an it's not an it's guy or anything like that. It's just this fantasy kind of RPG themed. The premise is about this hero boy who's not really good at being a hero and you find out why that is. It's not all his fault, but some things were kept from him as a child and now he's he's kind of an outcast and doesn't talk to anybody. And the only way he conversates is through text messages. The princess of this kingdom gets kidnapped by the demon lord and they send him to retrieve her because he's the hero. He starts texting the Demon Lord super like mean things and then finds out that the Demon Lord's a girl and she's really cool. And they start like, I don't know, they, they develop a relationship together. But then the princess kind of starts developing a relationship with the Demon Lord too. But the problem is, is that the hero can't really get as far to the quest as he wants to because he keeps dying because he's not that good. And so it's, it's funny, but uh, there's just a lot of Everything is in text boxes. I don't know. I don't know if I'm like liking it or not liking it. It's funny. I don't know. I'll have to see where the story goes. I've been fooled by these types of fantasy ones before, but I do like I do like the subtle nuances that people who text each other, especially people who like slide into people's DMs, you know, uh, I like that dynamic that's written in here. Just like how he interacts with the world is is interesting. But I'll have to finish it and you'll see my review soon. Moving on, we have a Yuri themed kind of short story visual novel from the Yuri author Nakatani, who's known for Bloom Into You, which is a rather popular series. Um, this is just a collection of short stories from like early 2010s, 2013s around there. It's interesting for me and I have a review of it on the site if you want to read it. Just some of the ideas that she highlights here and some of the ways of getting someone's attention or developing a relationship with somebody. Some of it's manipulative in a way, especially the high school themed where it's like you do things just because you like the person or you hope for things that you don't normally hope for and it ends up happening and that guilt drives you to doing everything you can for them and just circumstantial stuff and also some supernatural things are in here. 
There's an original story titled I Want to Be Kind and it's in the very back and I think this one is probably my favorite and just the, the the one that I connected with the most. They all have, they each offer things that I can connect with, but I think that one in general really stood out to me in this collection. Uh, so if you if you did like Bloom Into You or you just like Yuri short stories, as I'm sure some of you do, check out this one. Uh, the last one I wanna highlight is um, Happy Sugar Life. And I'm sure you've all probably watched the anime of this there was an anime holy shit this one is just fucked up i i can't uh there's one more there's one more volume left so i'm not gonna spoil anything but god damn the the pacing of this manga is is quick it's every page every panel is is something that progresses this toxic love between these characters, it is, it's disturbing. It's very yandere. Let me know what you think about this series. I don't want to ruin too much of it because I do want people to read it, especially now that the last volume is coming out so you can just binge it. It's a very quick read, uh, the, the entire series. They don't kind of include a lot of exposition. There's, there's a ton of grotesque story elements for sure that you just kind of have to soak in. But this one gave me nightmares and I had I actually read through it twice just because I wanted to. I don't, know, I don't know. It was that good. The art, the art is just just. I don't want to I don't want to ruin that scene. Uh, uh, just the first first like it's just it's quick like this all the way around and uh, man. Don't watch the anime either. I don't know if the anime is going to differ from this. The ending of the anime is going to differ from the manga. I hope it does. I don't like when they're both the same. So if you want to watch the anime, watch the anime. But I suggest reading the manga just because it you kind of sit with it and it kind of like you're, you're kind of forced to go through these panels. And that's all I wanted to highlight for this show. But one interesting thing that Viz sent over was that uh, Naruto got a fucking Monopoly board? The hell? I haven't opened it yet. You, you might find this funny, but uh, coronavirus means that not a lot of people want to come over to play a six hour game where you kind of cheat your friends out. I, I think it's um, very, um, a novelty item for sure, but <laughs> I don't think you've made it until you've had a Monopoly board made after you. And they have uh, weapons as the uh, little pieces. And you go on missions and you buy characters. I really like that, but you can get the characters. I, I think it's like I think it's like 25 bucks, 20 bucks. Don't quote me on that, but I, I don't think it's very much. Um, but it's out now and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to have friends over after all of this uh, coronavirus stuff on and bust it out just to show them how weeb I am. Maybe get made fun of for the rest of the night. But I think they're all just jealous that they don't have Naruto Monopoly. And I do. And that's that's the intro show, guys. Thanks for kind of sticking with me through it. This is not going to be the way that it is all the other episodes. It's going to be very much uh, news broadcasty kind of things, um, quick fire um, release dates. But I didn't want to waste your time too much. So I didn't want to talk about some manga and light novels that I'm currently reading. And that's pretty much what the podcast style episodes are going to be like with Spencer and I. So please uh, look forward to that and have a great rest of your month and anticipate this new show. Noisy pixel.